whenever you guys start talking, I will begin the timer. So we are Otec Internacional, a binational marine energy company looking for investors to build a 60 megawatt hybrid Otec plant off the coast of the islands of Cozumel in Quintana Roo, Mexico. So what inspires us? More than 2 million people in Mexico lack access to basic electrical services. In 2020, the price of electricity in Cozumel, where our plant will be located, was 7.2 cents per kilowatt hour, almost double of the 4.23 cents per kilowatt average price for electricity in Mexico. What's more, 96,000 people lack access to fresh water in Quintana Roo, Mexico. 2020 in particular was a notable year as island communities such as those in Cozumel faced a clean water shortage in the midst of a pandemic. Some households even reported going up to two weeks without access to clean water. As we looked around and investigated various technologies that can address these needs, we found that OTEC can do just that. So what exactly is OTEC? Well, OTEC, which stands for Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion, is a renewable energy conversion technology that produces mechanical work using the temperature difference between the surface and subsurface water to generate electricity. There are two principal categories of OTEC systems, closed cycle and open cycle, which differ in their configuration and resulting byproducts. There is also a third system known as a hybrid cycle, which combines parts of the open cycle and closed cycle plants for optimal power production. For this project, we propose a conceptual design of a hybrid OTEC system that combines the portability of water production from an open cycle with the high associated capacity factor of a closed cycle configuration. Additionally, we propose coupling the hybrid OTEC system with an offshore aquaculture farming system. Through our innovative design, our OTEC plant will generate electricity, fresh water, cold water to be used for aquaculture farming and carbon credits. And so when thinking about OTEC, we have to understand that OTEC is not a new technology. In fact, the idea was first conceived by a French physicist in the 1880s. The first OTEC plant was built just a few decades later in Cuba in 1930, but its capacity was tremendously small. It was only 22 kilowatts. Only a handful of fully operational plants in the world exist today. The two main plants are one 100 kilowatt plant in Japan and one 105 kilowatt plant in Hawaii. That plant is pictured here in the, in the uh, left picture. It is an onshore installation and it is the first plant ever in the history of the world to be connected to the U.S. grid. However, we propose in our plant an offshore design that is versatile and at a scale 1,000 times larger at 60 megawatts. The versatility that our plant will give can be applied to countries all over the world. In fact, according to literature reviews, 98 countries across the world have an OTEC potential, and thus we can apply OTEC internationally. What are we proposing? OTEC International consists of three main components. Number one, a 60, uh, 60 megawatt hybrid OTEC plant. Two, a desalinated water system. Uh, both number one and number two would both be located on a floating vessel. And three, an aquaculture farm built offshore. In order to get the temperature uh, data to the theoretical scale of a 60 megawatt hybrid OTEC plant, we use Cozumel Island in Mexico as the area of study. Uh, this site has been studied since 2014 as a potential site for OTIC installation due to its optimal conditions such as the 20 degree temperature difference between surface uh, 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 the surface water level and the deep water of 1,000 meters and an optimal distance to the coast of less than 5 kilometers. We envision a role in Cozumel as a generator of electricity, fresh water, aquaculture, and carbon credits. And so our first product is electricity. In Mexico, we envision ourselves as a private generator in the wholesale electricity market in Mexico. From our calculations, we will produce approximately 466,000 megawatt hours per year, or enough to sustain the electrical usage of about a half a million people. That is six times the population of Cozumel. Selling at a market price to distributors, we will generate an annual revenue of $63 million. Next, we will act as a fresh water provider to the residents and industries in Cozumel. 
From our calculations, we will produce approximately 31 Olympic pools worth of fresh water per day. That is enough to provide water for 730,000 people or eight times the Cozumel population. At market price, we will make an annual revenue of approximately $21 million. Next, we have aquaculture. Using the cold water produced through our OTEC cycle, we will utilize those flows to produce or to set the perfect conditions for farming ulva. Ulva, or sea lettuce as the common name, is an algae that can be, has a numerous applications uh, in the manufacturing industries, including pharmaceutical uses, edible uses, uh, and biofuel usage. OTEC International will produce approximately 42 tons of this algae per day, and through it capture 17 tons of carbon dioxide per day. Selling this at market price, we will generate an annual revenue of $150 million. And finally, we have carbon sequestration. Through the growing of this aquaculture and through the inherent fact of generating clean energy, we will capture approximately 6,500 tons of carbon dioxide per year. And that's equivalent to the work of 18 million trees. We'll be selling clean energy certificates in Mexico and renewable energy certificates to a global market. Selling at a market price of $12 per unit should generate a revenue of approximately $8 million. And so logically, drawing from these byproducts, we've analyzed the following market opportunities. First is electricity. In order to achieve the ambitious goals set by the government of Mexico of 50% of its energy being generated from renewable sources by 2050, the government has committed in 2019 alone $10 billion to developing renewable energy infrastructure, infrastructure that we believe OTEC falls into. Next, we have water. The National Water Commission of Mexico has committed to improve and build more potable water infrastructure. In Mexico in 2019, that translated to a budget of $4.4 billion to be spent on fresh water generation investments. Next, we have aquaculture. The North American algae market is single-handedly driven by the US. And thus, while we uh, are a plant operating in Mexico, we envision uh -huh. our products to North America or specifically to the United uh -huh. States. This is evaluated currently at approximately $600 million. And finally, in terms of carbon credits or carbon trading. Uh, currently, McKinsey predicts that by 2030 in the global market, the voluntary carbon market is worth approximately $50 billion. And as a global operator, we will sell our credits to the global scale and tap into that $50 billion market. Through this, we will serve the following stakeholders. At the local level, we have the residents of Cozumel themselves. And on the global scale, we have our carbon credit purchasers. Then also in our local scale, we have our electricity distributors and our aquaculture farmers. For our project, we communicated with the following federal agencies and businesses representing the various stakeholder groups we just talked about before. Across the board, they responded enthusiastically to both our design and business plan and offered letters of support for us. Specifically, Rotorac of Cozumel has already committed to interviewing residents of Cozumel engaging interests for our design. OTEC's competitive advantage lies in its energy production, as it is able to run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, save for yearly maintenance time which allows OTEC to have a capacity factor of 92%. Its energy production is not seasonally dependent, thus leading to an annual production when uh, taking into account a plan of 60 megawatts of more than 460,000 megawatt hour per year, which is about three times as much as any other type of renewable energy production. From you know, getting an initial overview of the low-life cost of OTEC, it becomes pretty apparent that when compared to other renewable energies like solar, OTEC has a high LCOE, uh, which is essentially the break-even price at which uh, you need to sell energy. So right now, solar is $30 per megawatt hour, while OTEC is $312 mega dollars per megawatt hour. Um, however, as this graph shows, the thing that gives OTEC its competitive advantage is this high capacity factor, which we kind of leverage in our financial analysis to generate revenue. And talking about our kind of profitability more specifically, even though 
OTEC does have a high LCOE, which kind of translates to having high CapEx and OPEX costs. We estimate that to generate an annual income of $274 million, an IRR of 22%, and a return on investment in seven years. And this is primarily due to how most of our revenue stream is coming from algae, harvesting and production, followed by electricity. And thus, we have our development timeline. This is based off of a development timeline proposed by Dr. Luis Vega, a leading OTEC expert and actually present with us today for a theoretical 50 megawatt plant. We envision that in years one to three, we'll be mainly focusing on the management, engineering design slash permits and acquisition and actual construction of our plant. In the following years, years four to five, we'll be com commencing with the actual deployment and the startup of our operational plant. So our technical design process consisted of five steps. The first is to determine and identify the design parameters, followed by conducting a mass and energy balance. And then re resulting from that is the component sizing, um, which led to being able to design the platform um, in order to fit each of the components. And lastly, was to determine a and conduct a performance analysis and determine the loading and um, resulting products from that. Um, the process also consisted of determining the aquaculture dimensions, which we identified based off the output that we would get from the platform, as well as the power grid connection. So here's a general overview of an OTEC system. The main components of this plant for the main cycle where the electric en energy is generated are the following. There are four 15 megawatt turbine generators, a working fluid pump, and two modules for plate fin heat exchangers one for the evaporator and the other for the condenser. There are two inlets. One is 20 meters below the surface and pumps warm surface water. The other is 1,000 meters below the subsurface and will pump up nutrient-rich deep water. Using the 20 degrees Celsius difference between these two inputs, we will be able to run a working fluid, which we identified as ammonia, to spin a turbine that will be connected to a generator, which will um, transmit electricity by transmission lines on the island. Referencing literature on OTEC plant designs, we design a platform to be a straight walled 276,000 ton shift fitted with semicircular ends. It will be 200 meters long, or the equivalent of two football fields long, 90 meters wide, and 24 meters deep, with an operating draft of 16 meters. Uh, we're looking at how each module fits in the ship. The 60 megawatt OTEC plant is 106 meters long by 80 meters wide while the desalinated water system is 78 meters long and 80 meters wide. Based off the dimensions of our, of our plants, we were able to determine the energy production. We have two outputs. One is approximately 60 megawatts of gross power output, um, which will uh, be transmitted to the power grid connection. Um, the second is the cold and warm water, which we will be using um, to transfer water for the desalinated water module. Um, there, we will be distributing a portion of it, 0.05% of the water flow in our system will be converted to fresh water. Of that 0.05% of the water, 30% um, will go for our aquaculture um, and the rest will be sent back into the ocean. In an effort to take advantage of the nutrient-rich deep water we are pumping up into our OTEC plants, we propose a conceptual development of a floating pond culture of green seaweed. Our plants will discharge 3 million cubic meters of cold water per day that we then connect it to our aquaculture module, which will be enough to sustain a 300 hectare pond. This novel system integrates our high OTEC deep water flows with the turnover aquaculture method, allowing for a maximization of seaweed production. When commencing any development project, it is important to take into account the risks as certain risks can pose challenges towards construction and various phases of the project. So first, briefly going over the environmental hazards associated with our OTEC plant, I'm going to highlight the first one, which is high levels of discharge that from the plant that can result in harmful algae blooms, which can alter the ocean's chemical composition. And this initially poses a high risk. Um, however, through various mitigation strategies, such as kind of 
figuring out that if you discharge the water at 142 meters below the sea, um, this is kind of a safe zone that it kind of mitigates the hazard and converts this high risk into a low risk. And then briefly going over the financial and operational risks. As I mentioned before, a no-tech plan will require a high capex cost and a high associated LCOE. And in order to kind of try to address these potential issues within our financial models, we incorporated government incentives, such as tax credits, and design a hybrid cycle, which provides uh, various sources of revenue, not just depending on electricity, which kind of makes our revenue stream more reliable and more, uh, more standard. From the operational side, there's corrosion of equipment and tropical cyclones, which can increase OPEX costs, decrease efficiency, and permanently damage the plant. And in order to, mit to mitigate these risks, uh, we will work with local government to develop monitoring plans for kind of corrosion and also develop a hurricane contingency plan that will make our plant resilient in the face of hurricanes. And so finally, our bottom line. We have three main considerations which, flex which reflect the three main values we hold as a company. First is the people. We care about the people we're serving. We will provide communities with a safe, resilient source of energy, water, and economic activity. Not only do we care about the very people we're serving, we care about the people who are operating our plant, and thus we will design with safety and resilient systems in mind. Next, we have the profit. We will fulfill our promises to our investors and sell products slash services that our customers really need. We will provide our customers with the essential resources of energy and water. Next, the planet. We will promote and actively practice renewable energy generation and carbon sequestration methods. Thus, when we designed our plant, we optimize for environmental stewardship, thinking about how to integrate our aquaculture modules, our freshwater modules, all in the vein of protecting the environment and furthering carbon sequestration. And so, as a company, we have done several outreach events in order to engage with the very people we just referenced. First, through social media. Our social networks combined, including our Facebook and our Instagram at Otec Internacional, have reached 14,000 people with almost 500 followers across the two uh, networks. Next, we have had extensive media coverage, whether it's from Dartmouth Engineering or the Semi Oceano, a leading institute of marine energy in Mexico, cover our very articles and distribute uh, information on our team and the MECC. Next, we've engaged extensively with student networks, again through the Semi Oceano student page and the Pan American Ocean Energy Student Network. We've amassed hundreds, if not thousands, of connections and new friends through that process. Additionally, our team members actually presented at the 8th International OTEC Symposium, talking about this project and soliciting for advice and meeting new engaged citizens uh, all regarding OTEC. And finally, we held two public webinars over the past couple of months, one in Spanish and one in English, to engage the public, engage the residents of Cozumel, and engage other students like us all across the globe in talking about OTEC and the emerging blue economy. And with that, we'd like to give special thanks to all the experts who contributed to making this presentation happen, including many who are in this room right now. Also, we'd like to thank our many advisors from the various schools that are supported, that we support. And again, we'd just like to give big thanks to everyone involved. With that, we'd like to refer, if anyone has any more questions, please, we will be talking about our appendices, which contain more technical information and detailed information on our business plan. So thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you guys. Um, so Ryan is now gonna move us over to a private breakout room. Anybody who is just in the general